It is now time for member statements. I recognize the member for Ottawa Centre. Well, thank you, Speaker. It's, uh, it's an honour to rise this morning. And I'm uh, thinking of a Paralympian back home, Kevin Frost, who recently did an interview uh, on the CBC Radio uh, morning news program. And Kevin has represented our country at a high level in Paralympic sport, but he's at his wit's end right now, Speaker, because he can't get access to optometric care. And what he is saying plaintively to this government is that for every day we don't have an agreement with optometrists in this province, we are depriving him his ability to move in our city, to, to access the things he needs, to get around, to move around. We're implicitly telling him, go to another province, go to another country maybe, to get your optometric needs met. And I just want us to reckon with the fact that Kevin's not alone. We have people with disabilities and seniors and kids urgently needing optometric care who aren't getting it. In the same radio program, Speaker, uh, a member of this government, MPP Marto, spoke. And when she was asked and told what the government had said, that it's trying to negotiate in faith and they're waiting for the optometrists to come back to the table, MPP Marto said, you know what, that's not true. The fact of the matter is when the optometrists went to the table and they opened up the Zoom screen, they saw a blue screen with nobody on it. So, Speaker, as Kevin and others reckon with how to resolve this mess, can we just please get back to the table? Because people with disabilities, kids, seniors, they deserve optometric care, and they need it now. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Scarborough, Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Today I rise to speak about an issue that has impacted many of us, especially in our schools. This coming Sunday is the start of Bullying Awareness and Prevention Week. Ontario has designated the week beginning on the third Sunday of November as Bullying Awareness and Prevention Week to help promote safe schools and a positive learning environment. Bullying is aggressive. It is meant to cause harm, fear, and distress. Frankly speaking, Mr. Speaker, it hurts. Over one in five Ontario students reported being bullied at school, according to a 2018 study from the Center for Addiction and Mental Health, and this often leads to mental health issues. I have heard from many constituents from recently in my riding of Scarborough Rouge Park about instances of bullying that has happened in schools. A young child may not know the word bully, but they do know when someone is hurting them or being mean or making them feel sad or scared. And that's why, Mr. Speaker, the Bullying Awareness and Prevention Week is so important. I encourage everyone to promote healthy relationships to prevent bullying and create a safe and accepting envi environment. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton East. Thank you, Speaker. The upcoming increase of the minimum wage is $15 is at least three years behind the times and less than it should be. To add insult to injury, the decision still forgets about a large group of workers in this province who will not see their lives improved by this announcement, injured workers. A quick thanks to Chris Grayway from the Injured Workers Community Legal Clinic, Carl Creever, and Paul Stacho from the uh, Hamilton and District Injured Workers Group for bringing this issue to my attention. For many years, the WSIB has used a practice known in the community as deeming. Simply put, with deeming, the WSIB dreams up a phantom job that it claims the injured worker could get in theory, takes away the wages the worker is deemed to be earning, and leaves the injured worker with little or no comp compensation benefits, regardless of whether the injured worker is actually employed or not. For example, a welder earns $34 an hour when he suffers a permanent back injury and cannot return to his old job. While recovering, he receives full benefits, 85% of his net average earnings. The WSIB eventually tells the injured worker that it's time to go back to work after some retraining. The WSIB deems the worker in a 40-hour week, 15 minimum wage job as a parking lot attendant despite the fact that he's not working. The welder will lose hundreds of dollars per week as a result of the wages from his deemed job. The WSIB practice of deeming injured workers has to stop now. Member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to honour a gentleman from my riding that I've already spoken about a few times. Murray Waitung is the First Nations Second World War veteran that I named my private member's bill after. The Act would create an award for cadets in Ontario to celebrate 
volunteerism and citizenship, something that Marie exemplified. The award would also give us the opportunity to educate some of our brightest young leaders on one of the injustices that Canada did to First Nation individuals. More than 7,500 Métis, Inuit and First Nation individuals voluntarily joined the armed forces to fight for Canada in the First and Second World Wars. And any one of them who spent more than four years away from their reserve fighting for Canada's freedom were stripped of their status. Murray would be celebrating his 100th birthday at the end of this month. Unfortunately, Father Time tapped Murray on the shoulder last February and asked him to perform one more civic duty. Shomas Waitung passed away within minutes of the death of a young lady from Curve Lake. And like the gentleman that Shomas was, we believe he chose that time so he could escort her safely. To celebrate a life well lived and in honor of all that he did, I'll be reintroducing that act later this week. Member statements. The member for Thunder Bay, Atacocan. Thank you, Speaker. Today, I want to bring to the attention of this House the Northern Health Travel Grant. This government continues to ignore many of the ongoing issues with this grant, and people are falling through the cracks. You cannot just ignore people in northern and rural communities across this province who deserve equal access to medical care, just like residents in larger cities like Toronto. I think of my constituents, like Margaret Ray. She has to go to Manitoba monthly for specialized treatment. She's on her 11th year of doing this, and it has caused her grave financial problems as she is net on a fixed income. The actual cost is far greater than the mileage reimbursement she receives. Another constituent, Sandra Filion, a former police officer from Atacokan, she was referred to a spe from, by her specialist to a physiotherapist, but the health grant won't cover it because they do not recognize it as an OHIP facility. When she appealed, she eventually found out the travel grant wasn't hearing appeals during much of the pandemic. Travel for autism parents and therapies are not covered, leaving those parents on the hook for that. The Begg family, who had an infant son, needed a special therapy recommended by their pediatrician as their best outcome for their son. Northern Health Travel Grant denied it, leaving them thousands out of pocket. This week, I reintroduced my bill 46, the Northern Health Travel Grant Advisory Committee Act. When will this government act to fix the broken Northern Health Travel Grant system? Thank you. <laughs> member Statements. The member for Ottawa South. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And November is Lebanese Heritage Month in Ontario, and it recognizes the many contributions of the Lebanese community across our province. So I'd like to thank MPP Sattler and Minister McLeod for co-sponsoring Bill 60, Lebanese Heritage Month, which I introduced, and we passed into law into 2017. Lebanese Canadians have been coming to Ontario since the 19th century. They have contributed greatly to our prosperity and to the economic, cultural, and academic fabric of our province. Lebanese Heritage Month is an opportunity for Lebanese Canadians to celebrate their culture and traditions and to recognize and educate future generations of the great contributions the Lebanese community has made to our province and our country. Every year on November 22nd, the Lebanese community celebrates Lebanese Independence Day. That day in 1943, Lebanon was declared a, so a sovereign nation. And in my writing about the South, we have a strong and deeply rooted Lebanese community. Every year there are many celebrations of Lebanese culture in our city, especially in the summer. One of them is in Ottawa South, the Ottawa Lebanese Festival at St. Elias Cathedral. So they combine the five S, which is faith, family, food, fun. I think I missed one. Faith, family, food, fun, and friends. Thank you, there we go. Uh, so it's one of my mom's must do's every year. And so we went this year and she hadn't been out in a long time to a restaurant and they treated her so well. They made you feel very special and I wanna thank them for that. So, happy Lebanese Heritage Month. 
Thank you. Member statements. The member for Renfrew. Nipis Speaker, 99, 98. The clock is ticking and the countdown is on for the Ontario Winter Games to come to Renfrew County on the weekends of February 24th to 27th and March 3rd to 6th, 2022. The air was filled with excitement Tuesday when Minister McLeod joined local dignitaries and other invited guests to officially start the countdown to Ontario's 2022 Winter Games. Renfrew County is getting ready to welcome about 3,500 athletes, coaches and officials to what promises to be a spectacular couple of weekends. The Games are for up-and-coming athletes ages 12, 11 to 22 and will provide developmental experience to prepare them for national and international competitions. While organizing events such as this provides a significant challenge, our folks in Renfrew County are up to it. We were also thrilled when Minister McLeod awarded us the Games. Not only will this be a tremendous sporting event, it will bring significant economic benefits to local businesses. I know that everyone is excited to showcase what we have to offer in Renfrew County, and Minister McLeod got a taste of it a couple of weeks ago when she and her staff came to visit. A gigantic thank you to Games Chair Peter Eamon and Games Manager Cindy Burwell for their leadership, all the, and all the numerous volunteers that have stepped forward to offer their time and commitment to make these games a truly remarkable experience for everyone involved. Thank you. Hey. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas. Speaker, it was 90 years ago during the height of the Great Depression that the first Hamilton Day was held. It was organized to boost the spirits of local residents and to boost the local economy. And by all accounts, it was a great success. Retailers of the day reported record sales. So fast forward from 1931 to 2021, and what a great time to reinduce Hamilton Day as we are once again trying to rebuild uh, from another global crisis, which is the COVID-19 pandemic. This Saturday, November 20th, is Hamilton Day 2021, a day to celebrate all things Hamilton just as the holiday shopping season gets into full swing. This one-day event is a fun way for all Hamiltonians to show community pride to celebrate local, independent businesses. Our small retail shops, cafes, bars, restaurants, theaters, artists, florists, fitness studios, personal services, entertainment stores, and so much more. This is your opportunity to su support your favorite local business or try that new restaurant or store that has just opened up. Folks can go to the website, hamiltonday.ca, to get more details and share online your favorite local spots to shop, relax, and eat. My riding is home to wonderful and historic BIA districts like Westdale, Ancaster, and Dundas, and I'm looking forward to a busy day, a croissant from Kanish Bakery, browsing the books at Mixed Media, and maybe the best nachos from the Collins Brew House. We've all been through so much, Mr. Speaker, business owners and community alike. 90 years ago, we showed our local spots some love. It's time we do it again. Member Statements. The member for Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock. Mr. Speaker, and I'm pleased to rise today to recognize and thank the Royal Canadian Legions in my riding of Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock, and legions across the province of Ontario for hosting Remembrance Day ceremonies last week to honour and remember Canada's fallen veterans. Legions are so important to our local communities. In my riding of Halliburton, Kawartha Lakes, Brock, there are 15 legions and countless volunteers who dedicate their time to supporting all who served Canada, promoting remembrance, and serving our communities and country. Every year in November, Legion members distribute millions of poppies and collect donations to raise money in support of veterans and their families. Their campaign and dedication of time is so important to annual um, events, and it does not go unnoticed. Through the Legions, compassionate volunteers help to support seniors, raise funds for local initiatives, and so much more year-round. We cannot thank you enough for all that you do, and as Premier Ford said last week, our Legion members truly are salt-of-the-earth people. I encourage everyone to support their local legions, take time to learn from their members, and take a moment now and then to remember the brave men and women who served and sacrificed for all that we have today. Thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. I'm very pleased to inform the House that today's page captain is page 
Felicia Pagulian from the riding of Brampton North. And we have with us today at Queen's Park her mother, Diane Pagulian, and her father, Russ Pagulian. Also, we are joined today by the father of Paige Alfie Tabachnik from the riding of Davenport, Scott Tabachnik. Welcome to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario. We're delighted to have you here. I understand the Leader of the Opposition has a point of order. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Speaker, I seek unanimous consent for the House to observe a moment of silence for the 64 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 since we last paid tribute to the victims of the pandemic on November 5, 2021. Ms. Horvath is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to observe a moment of silence in memory of the 64 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 since we last paid tribute to the victims of the pandemic on November the 5th, 2021. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Members will please rise. Thank you very much. Members may take their seats.